to ask if you can uh, lead us in prayer as we prepare for the word this morning and let us pray this this first week of the year uh you know some of us may have still be in uh, a little rest mode vacation mode and uh but we are going to do kingdom business this year this is the year uh to ask god for some more 2024 uh you know we we want to ask god for souls for the kingdom and so go ahead and pray for us pray for our speaker and the word that we would receive today good morning let us pray Gracious Lord, we are thankful, Lord, for the opportunity not only to be here, but, Lord, to be witnesses of your power that is moving and to be placed in a position, Lord, where your power and your spirit could move through our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the testimony we have heard, Lord, of individuals, Lord, that are uh, thanking in, in a tangible way, Lord, putting aside funds to show forth their gratitude and blessings that you have blessed them with. We pray, Lord, that as we enter into this new year, Lord, each of us would realize, Lord, that we are a church where your Holy Spirit dwells in. So we ask, Lord, forgiveness of our sins. We pray in a special way, Lord, for the various uh, projects that are going on in our church. We thank the Lord for your blessings, for the manifestation, Lord, of your power in these churches. We pray for the pastors. We pray, Lord, for the pew members. We pray for the facility where our churches reside in. We realize, Lord, that this year is a year where we are closer to your period and your coming. And Lord, though we may start the year, there is no guarantee we may end the year. But what we have, Lord, is your spirit with us. We have the promise that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, we realize that we are beacons, we are light bearers, Lord, to tell others about this marvelous God that we serve and we desire to be with. We pray, Lord, in a special way for the one that is to break the bread of life for us today. We humble ourselves, Lord, waiting to receive the bread. And we pray, Lord, as we receive the bread, Lord, we will go forth and share the blessings and the joy, Lord, of the fact that you are the bread of heaven, the bread that our souls need. Lord, the things that we have omitted or forget to ask for. Remember, Lord, those who are bereaved. Remember those who are struggling. Remember, Lord, that those who are in need of work or employment, Lord, that you bless them. And Lord, as the rain is falling where I am presently, I pray the rain of your Holy Spirit upon each person, Lord, as we sit at your feet. Bless the speaker, Lord, again, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elder, for uh, taking us again to the throne. Saints of God, if you'll go ahead and help me uh, welcome to the platform this morning to share this uh, the word with us, the fresh manner with us. Uh, we want to go ahead and welcome uh, God's uh, servant in the person of Pastor uh, Jose Diaz. He was born in Mexico, moved to California at the age of 15. After graduating high school, he went back to Mexico to study at uh, Monte Morelos uh, University. Uh, and after acquiring a master's degree in pastoral ministry, again, he uh, earned a scholarship to uh, participate in a transitional teaching program, uh, which he is uh, really, really a scholar. He has for 20 years experience, has experience as an educator for 20 years. Uh, he has actually, the, he is actually the founder of the first uh, dual language school in Barron County. Uh, in Michigan. Uh, he is a, a scholar. He, he loves to study languages, especially uh, Koine Greek, uh, which you can tell. Uh, we see his name is even written uh, in, 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 in Greek. Uh, I didn't pass the Greek, but at least I can recognize that doc. Uh, he is currently pursuing his uh, PhD at, at the seminary, and uh, he is here as a scholar, as uh, a teacher, uh, but more than that, he is just here as a servant of God to share with us the word of God. Doc, we want to welcome you. Uh, we are glad that you're here with Amen. us this morning, Manor, and uh, we turn the time over to you, Pastor uh, Jose Diaz. Good morning, everyone. Morning. I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Pastor uh, Nashani, Pastor Samuel, uh, for this opportunity to share the word of God is always a privilege to share God's word. Uh, uh, so I appreciate uh, the, this opportunity. Uh, so I would like to uh, share my screen now, if uh, if you could allow me to share uh, my screen. Um, so as I said, um, I am so glad to be able to share this morning with you 
God's word. Um, and, uh, and I appreciate your prayers. Uh, I hope I am sharing the right screen. Yes, do you see the screen now? Uh, all right. So let's get started. Uh, this morning, I would like to share with you uh, this message. It is time to go to the top of the mountain. It is time. It is 2024. This could be your breakthrough year. So as I uh, share this word, I ask God to guide me to uh, open my heart and my mind, my mouth, so I can share his word according to his will. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I am uh, humble to share this word today, your word. And um, so I ask you, Lord, to empower me. Give me the courage. Give me the strength to do your will. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You know, I always heard about people going to the to the Holy Land, to the biblical uh, biblical lands, and I always thought about these uh, opportunities until this uh, summer that I had the opportunity to go uh, to uh, this uh, trip. Okay, so this is uh, called uh, the. Israel, Egypt, and Jordan trip, a student study tour uh, for Andrews University students. And I was blessed to participate, and I would like to share a special uh, occasion as a highlight, I would say, uh, of this trip with you this morning. So here you can see uh, a, this uh, special place. Uh, Rephidim, and you, you can see uh, on this picture, Dr. Davidson, who was one of the leaders of this, uh, of this uh, student uh, study, uh, student study tour uh, in the biblical lens. And uh, what in, for preparation, as we, um, uh, as we were preparing to go to Mount Sinai, uh, Dr. Davidson shared this, uh, this reflection based on Exodus 19, 10 to 13 that I would like to read this morning to you and, and then uh, share a little bit of my testimony. So we find here in this passage, uh, uh, Exodus chapter 19, that says, The Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. And you shall set limits for the people all around saying, uh, be, be careful with this, with this section. Take care not to go up to into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall be stoned or shot, whether beast or man. He shall not live. And then we read, when the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. Do you see something here at the end? First, God says, when I show these signs, when you see these wonders, then you should not get close. You should not touch it. But then he specifically says, when the trumpet sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. God wanted his people to go up to him, to have this relationship with him. Do you see that? But if you read the rest of the passage, uh, chapter 19, uh, which is before chapter 20, and we know what we have in chapter 20, we have the 10 commandments or the 10 words. 
according to the Hebrew. So, one, what is going on here? Well, the people of God, the people of Israel, just stayed with the first part of the message. So, what happens here is that they only see, when they see the signs, they, they get so scared that they they forget, they forgot about the last part of the message. God wanting to wanting his people to go up to the mountain to have this relationship with him. So now let's see uh in, in this experience. Let me go back a little bit. Okay, you see here the layout of Mount Sinai. Okay, so we uh, we enjoyed going up uh, Mount Sinai. We we got together around around eleven thirty. That's when we were summoned to get together uh, around eleven, and we started we started to go up around twelve 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 thirty a.m. Uh, because our goal was to get to the to the top uh, at sunset. Uh, sorry, at sun at sunrise. So we uh we started our journey going up. As you can see here, I'm gonna share a few pictures going up Mount Sinai. You can see there. And finally we made it to the top uh around one um after four hours, about four and a half hours, we made it all the way to the top. You can see a few pictures here. And praise God, we made it. I didn't know I was going to make it. I prayed God to make it to the top because I was sick that day. And I didn't know, I didn't know if I was going to make it. A friend of mine said, I will stay down here because I, I won't be able to make it. And I was also feeling sick. But I said, God, please. Please allow me to make it to the top. Some, uh, if you have ever traveled, you know the the changes that that we have to go through, that we have to adjust. And uh, food is one of the issues. Water is another issue. So, uh, I wasn't feeling bad. Let's put it that way. And I praise God that we were able to find one restroom, all going up. And that was my only stop. And uh, and then we made it all the way to the top. Why was uh, that important? Before I um, uh, before I move on and say why why going up to the mountain to the top of the mountain was important uh, this time. Let me share with you. Let me share with you. Um, my journey okay uh which which is not an easy journey to share that's why i ask you to pray as i share this part of uh the conversation because um i know it won't be easy for me i share this testimony uh, in um in a special place at the um, um Uh, well, I, I will check later. Well, let me let me check right here really quick where I shared this testimony. Oh, here it is. At the forest of Ephraim. Okay, a struggle between a father and a son. That's where I share my testimony. Then I I I wasn't thinking in sharing this testimony today. But God kept telling me, you have to share. You have to share your testimony. So if I break down, please forgive me because I was not meant to share this testimony today. But I'm going to share because I think someone needs to hear my testimony at the beginning of 2024. My goal in life, my goal in life was to grow up. 
and kill the man I once called father. But God had other plans for my life. You know, as I reflect and think about everything I went through growing up, my professional life, and where God has taken me, I can humbly say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. You know, I as I as it was shared, I was born in Mexico. I was born into an abusive uh, family. My father was an alcoholic and an abusive man. He would beat all of us when he was drunk. His addiction drove him to commit unthinkable acts to my family. I remember one day when I was about nine years old, he started beating my mother and I stood up to him with a two by four piece of wood. I hit him as hard as I could. Unfortunately, I was still a child. He turned around very angry and beat me really bad that day. That's when I realized I was still a child and I could not stood up to him. So I swore, I swore that one day I would grow up, that I would grow up and kill him one day for all the damage he had done to my family. From then on, that became my goal in life. As years passed, I started I store in my heart so much hate that I can describe it as a bomb ready to explode. This anger became into, into rage, rage, grew up into rage. After all the abuse, my father ended up in prison and was locked up for eight years. And instead of recognizing that it was his mistakes that took him to jail, he blamed us, he blamed all of us for ending up in jail and threatened to kill us whenever he got out. When his, when his time was almost up, fearing for our lives, my mother fled the country and brought us, brought us all to the United States to start a new life. After graduating from high school in California, I was invited to participate in literature evangelism. And through that work, I became convicted that I should study theology. So I returned to Mexico to study at Montemorelos University. At graduation, I was invited to work as an associate pastor in a, in a large church district in the southern part of Mexico. Nevertheless, in my heart, I knew I had business to take care of. So before I started working in ministry, I decided to pay my father a visit. When I arrived to the house where, uh, where I lived growing up, I knocked at the door and he came out. He did not recognize me because almost 15 years had passed. When I told him who I was, he stepped back in surprise and said, you are my son. And then he added, I have taken you out of my mind a long time ago. Not paying attention to this comment, I asked him if I could come in. He invited me into the house and he introduced me to his new family. My heart was experiencing different emotions at that moment. I felt as if, if it wasn't real. Then I saw a basketball in its net and I told him, you know what? I play basketball too. He said that he was going to play basketball at a basketball tournament that day and they needed a player. Then he asked me if I wanted to join them. Still feeling all these emotions, I said, okay, 
yes, I will play for you. And he said, we have a uniform that you could wear. We had a great game that day and we won. Towards the end of the day, I realized it was time for me to leave. That's when I asked my father, how is your relationship with God? He told me that he had started attending a local church and he was uh, he and he was serving as a worship leader. That's when I looked into his eyes and not being able to contain myself. I broke into tears and said, if God has forgiven you, I forgive you too. I gave him a hug and I left the place completely shattered, completely broken. As I traveled to where was, I was assigned to work as a pastor, I cried throughout the 12 hour trip. And as I cried, I felt how God was cleaning my heart and cleaning and getting rid of all the anger I had stored up all those years. As he was preparing me for the task ahead. In 2004, my son, my older son, Joseph was born. I was afraid to be a father. Because I did not see a good role model. That's when my wife gave me a gift, a book by Yash McDowell. The title of the book is The Father Connection. She gave me the Spanish version of this book. In Spanish, the translation would be The Father I Want to Become. A powerful book. I remember reading how the author grew up being upset and ashamed of his father to the point of tying him up so he would choke himself when he was drunk, when he was drunk. I connected with this story right away. In the narrative, he gets to a part where he says that even though his earthly father failed him, our heavenly father will never fail us. Through this book, I realized that no one should go through life thinking they are fatherless because we all have a heavenly father who loves us more than anyone in the whole world. I remember growing up thinking that I was a fatherless child, but now I, got, I know God is my father. Accepting this reality was a life-changing experience for me. In addition, this book helped me transition from not being able to call God Father to praying to Him with all my father, with all my heart and say, Heavenly Father. But before I could not say these words, I was angry with God. for everything that happened to me and my family growing up. That's when I participated in 2023, I participated in this uh, student study tour, as I mentioned before. And when I heard that it was time to go to the top of the mountain. I took the challenge. And God allowed me to 
be able to feel well enough to walk up for four and a, about four and a half hours. When we got there, we were invited to reflect, to pray, and talk to God. And when I when I was praying, I heard a voice in my mind saying, Son, I have been waiting for you. All these years. Son, I have been waiting for you all these years. Um, now I, I would like to, to share this quote. I read it. This week. To forgive is to send a prisoner free. And to discover the prisoner was you. Oh. Let me go back to this passage. Do you remember what I said? that the people of Israel missed the last part of the message. Verses eight, 16 to 20, we read, In the morning, on the third day, there were thunders and lightning, and a thick cloud on the mountain, and a very loud trumpet blast, so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out to the camp to meet God, and they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now, Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. The smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Moses Spoke and God answered him in thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. But guess what? The people of Israel did not want to go up. Why? Because they focus on the thunders, they focus on the lightning, they focus on the cloud. They focus on the smoke. They focus on all these uh, and this all and all the things surrounding the mountain. Let me make an application here. Let me make an application that I think it is fitting for this passage. That's what happens. That's what happens. Sometimes we focus on the things that surround our lives. That we, that all these things serve as a barrier between us and our Heavenly Father. I am not sure who is listening to this message today. But let me ask you. Did someone hurt you when you were growing up? Did someone hurt you in church? Was it a relative? Was it your father, your mother? A brother or sister in church? That is placing a barrier between you and your heavenly father. 2024 can be a breakthrough. It is time to let it go. It is time to forgive those who hurt you. Those who wronged you.
To forgive is to set a prisoner free and to discover the prisoner was you. I know that the culture that surrounds us is always telling us not to forget, never forget, always reminding us what was done to us, what was done to you, what was done to me. It is time to forgive. I'm not taking lightly what happened to you. I'm not taking lightly what happened to me. But I, what I'm telling you is that all these things could stop you from coming to your heavenly father. Am I talking to someone who is angry with, angry with God? Let it go. Let it go. Let me conclude with this passage from the book of Hebrews. As you probably know I'm majoring in the New Testament, so I cannot, uh, I cannot let you go without sharing a passage from the New Testament. Amen. Praise the Lord. In the book of Hebrews, Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight. Yes, it is a heavy burden not to forgive and let it go. Pray for those who hurt you. It won't be easy. It is time to let it go. Because it's a heavy way to carry in 2024. You know, that we see in, uh, in English, we see the word therefore, right? And we don't pay attention to it. Nothing happens. But you know what? The New Testament was not written in English. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was not written in English. It was written in Greek. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, not, not so much for those who have struggled going through Greek. But maybe it is time to go back to Greek. The word therefore, is it okay if I if I share some 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 a uh, word, just a word in Greek? Please allow me to share one word in Greek. The word translated, therefore, is the word tigarun. Tigarun. So what does tigarun mean? Tigarun is a connector. Okay? Tigarun is a connector. It's going to connect two things. What was said before and what is going to be said after that is a connector. So what does that have to do with, uh, with verse 1, chapter 12, verse 1? Well, it is talking about chapter 11. And chapter 11 is called sometimes the Hall of Faith. Uh, those, of, those who have faith, who grew up in faith, and we find people who you say, oh, really? We find Abraham, a liar, but he grew up in faith. We find a murderer. We find David there. Oh, really? David? Yes. We find people we, that we think we, sometimes we think we may not see in heaven, but guess what? They grew up in faith. Samson. Oh, really, Samson? Yes. We find Samson on that list. And all those people. They were not perfect. They, some of them went through struggles like you and I. But guess, guess what? They grew up in faith. So these are the witnesses we are talking about. They give their testimony. That they struggled, but they made it through. Not because they were strong, not because, because they were uh, holy, but because 
they relied on God. And I think many of them, they had to let it go. They have to lay aside all these burdens, all these things that are heavy. So, as I said, it is time to let it go. It is time to forgive. 2024 can be the year for you. We are just starting the, the uh, new year. We are on the fifth day of the of this year. And this message, if all you remember is this, it is time to go to the top of the mountain and get to know your heavenly father. You should not let these barriers between you and God stand any longer. How long has it been that they hurt you? 10 years, 20 years. Let it go. Especially because it is going to affect your relationship with your heavenly father. And it is a heavy burden to carry around. The passage says that we have a group of people that went through the same like you. You are not the only one who has gone through it. Put it in God's hands. Put it in God's hands. Let me, let me just uh, finish today with this uh, song. You have probably heard this song. And as you hear this part of the song, if there is anybody in here who like to say, God, this is the year that I'm going to break through with your power, Holy Spirit. Chris Tomlin wrote this uh, song, or uh, he's the one who sings it. Good Father. As you hear this song, as you hear this song, if you want to open your heart to God, this is the time. Twenty twenty four is the year where you can say, Heavenly Father, I'm not going to let anything between you and me. It is time to go to the top of the mountain and get to know your heavenly father. Forgive those who hurt you. Because then you will be angry with God for allowing these things to happen to you. But today you can say you are a good, good father. Heavenly Father. Let's pray. A Heavenly Father. A Heavenly Father. Some of us are hurting, Lord. But you are a good, good father. You are a good, good father. We praise your name. And we forgive those who hurt us. Because we don't want any barriers between you and us, Lord. 2024 can be a great year. For all of us, Lord. And it will be. Because we are taking this decision today. To forgive. And let it go. I'm not saying it is easy. But you will give us the power. 
Holy Spirit. We hang, we, we hang on to your promises that you will empower us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to share this testimony, even though it is hard, even though it is difficult. But if someone hears these words today, your words, and they come back to you, it is worth it, Lord. It was worth it to share this testimony. Thank you, Lord, because you are a good, good father. And we love you. 2024, thank you for this invitation, Lord. Because we can break through with your help and with your power. We love you, our Heavenly Father. Thank you because you are a good, good Father. In Jesus Christ, we pray and for his glory. Amen. 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 Glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That is a charge. That is a charge. That is a charge. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. What a what a what a. What a word today, what a word today, uh, what a word today. There is not one single person that was not touched by that word. Uh, we thank you, we thank you, Pastor uh, Jose, for not just telling us about the top of the mountain, uh, but showing us the way to get to the top of the mountain. Uh, it's wanting to tell us how beautiful the view was and what the sights were like, but you showed us the way. Amen. If we're going to make it and we can't make it, we can't make it to the top of the mountain. But there are some stuff that we need to leave behind. And so we heard the charge. We heard the call. Uh, we thank the man of God for sharing openly his experience. Uh, because I think all of us uh, have the experiences that are similar. And we are grateful to God that we receive this word today. We thank you. We thank you as you continue to pursue your journey. Uh, that God will take you not just to Mount Sinai, uh, but he will take you into the heart and the bosom of God. And indeed, you would know what it means to experience the love of a good, good father as you seek Amen. to be an earthly father. We're going to pray again together, saints. I prayed for you. Uh, share this word. you got to share this word, this testimony. If you haven't shared anything yet and morning manner, this is the one to share uh, because this is the message. This is the word, perhaps more than any that we have received that's going to set somebody free uh, to know that you're not alone. Uh, there are others who are journeying like you, uh, others who have experienced and they have seen that there's something beautiful on the other side. We're going to pray together for the man of God. Uh, forgiveness is to be set, set a prisoner free and to discover that that prisoner was me. And so loving father, we thank you God for being a good, good father. Uh, we thank you, God, for your servant, Father, that you sent our way today uh, to, to give us this fresh word, Father. Uh, Father, it's what some of us need at the beginning of this new year because we have carried over old pains and old hurts and still dealing with old things. Today, you have reminded us, Lord, that it's essential if we are going to make it uh, to the top of the mountain, uh, to the best relationship yet with God. Father, we have to forgive and we have to be willing to accept the forgiveness from others. And so, Father, somebody heard that word today. And, Father, it has reopened old wounds. Father, there is a struggle right now. There's someone, Father, who is perhaps even teary-eyed, God, trying to figure how to deal with what they have just received. But I pray for strength today. What you have done for Pastor Jose, Father, you can do for us. And so we pray, God, that you help us to know that we don't have to do it all alone. You would show us the way unto the top of the mountain, though we may climb weak and weary. Oh, Father, you will take us up on eagle's wing. And so we thank you again for your servant. Bless him, God. Be with him in his study. Be with his family. Be with his ministry, we pray. And bless us, oh God. Let us keep on climbing the rough side of the mountain because it's worth the climb to be in the arms in the bosom of our Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. God bless Amen. you. Amen. God bless family. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Please share the best message. Share this message with someone. Uh, they will be blessed even as we were blessed. Blessings to everyone. Have a wonderful Sabbath and a great weekend. Amen.